Hi everyone. In this video I wanted to spend a little time showing you how to compute composite variables in SPSS and we will be using some fictional survey uh, and performance data. So before we get started I want to mention that underneath the video description you will find a link to the SPSS data file that I'm working from throughout this demonstration. Uh, additionally, you will find a link to a PowerPoint, and that PowerPoint is a very short one, but it contains some of the information that I'll be covering. So let's go ahead and get started by opening up our SPSS data file and looking at um, its contents. So here we have our uh, data file opened up, and basically the first uh, 10 variables in the data set are reflecting uh, the items within our survey. Uh, the first five items are essentially reflecting a person's, um, are designed to me uh, measure a person's interest in uh, politics. Um, the next five items are designed to measure their self-efficacy for learning politics. And then at the end of the data set, we have three um, performance measures. So in terms of their political knowledge, comprehension, and reasoning about political issues. Now the numbers that um, are shown, uh, that are associated with each item represents uh, a person's responses on uh, either the survey with respect to the interest and efficacy items uh, or uh, responses um, or basically uh, scale scores with respect to the performance measures right here. So before we start uh, uh, scoring our, uh, our our composite measures or creating our composite measures just really quickly I wanted to show you sort of a factor analytic representation of what the items are designed to measure so you can see that our interest items we have interest one through interest five these are all supposed to be measuring a late construct called political interest so the reason why the arrows are pointing uh, to each of these uh, boxes right here is because the idea is that when individuals are responding to the interest items, um, at least uh, part of the variation should be attributable, and hopefully most of the variation is attributable to um, the political interest factor. Um, the E's over here just represent error variances, but we're not going to get into all that. Um, you also see with our political competence measure, we have our knowledge, comprehension, and reasoning uh, uh, scores, if you will. And so the idea is that how people respond to these sort of scale scores uh, would reflect their level of political competence. And then over here, we have self-efficacy, uh, our factor being indicated by our uh, efficacy items within the scale. So basically what happens um, in, in applied research is we, you know, we'll take the individual measures of the construct and we will uh, aggregate them in some way. Maybe we sum them up or, or average them out. But in the end, the idea is to come up with a full scale uh, score that represents where a person falls on that particular construct. Now the downside in a lot of this is that we uh, are not able to tease out that measurement error associated with our uh, scales. Um, and so it's for that reason that we want to make sure that we report at least on the reliability associated with any kind of multi-item or indicator uh, uh, measure. So let's go ahead and take a look at our items and then we'll begin to uh, compute our scale scores. So with respect to uh, the interest and um, efficacy items, you'll see that the first five items in our measure here um, are about our interest in politics and all those are, are um, worded in the affirmative. So basically, if a person indicates uh, that they strongly agree, disagree by uh, replying with a one, um, they're basically indicating for all of these items that they uh, are not interested in politics. Whereas if, if they indicate a five, which would be a strongly agree, then that indicates that they are uh, very interested in uh, politics. Now with respect to the next five uh, items right here, uh, we actually have a couple of um, sort of negatively worded items. So you'll see with item six, it says, I feel confident in my ability to understand political issues. Seven, I can successfully learn more about political issues. Eight is a negatively worded item because it says, I do not understand what people are talking about when they discuss political issues. And the same goes with item 10. I am never going to be able to understand what politicians are talking about. So the thing is, is that if we're using the scale from one to five, uh, it makes sense with six and seven 
because in both of those cases, a one would indicate that they're not interested in political issues. Uh, five would indicate that they're very interested. But on item number eight and item number 10, if they indicate strong agreement, uh, then what that actually is indicating that they strongly agree with the opposite sentiment that's reflected in the remaining item. So what that's going to mean is, is that when we compute our scale score, we're going to want to make sure to reverse code those two items or, or else um, it's not going to make much sense um, with, our, with our full scale score. So uh, let's go ahead and open up SPSS and begin with computing our, um, our full scale scores, our composite scores. Okay, so with our interest items right here, um, we don't have to do any kind of reverse coding because all of the items are worded, worded in the same direction. So what I'm going to do is go up to the uh, transform uh, button right here and then go to compute variable. And under here, I'm just going to create a target variable. So I'll just call this uh, interest or uh, yeah that'll work uh, and then under numeric expression we can do this in a couple of ways if you want just to, to sum up the items um, you can actually do that under numeric uh, expression pretty easily you can just you can either type or you can kind of move things over here you can just say interest one plus interest two plus interest three plus interest four plus interest five and when we click OK right here um, at the end of the uh, data set, you'll see that we now have our interest variable uh, that's given. So we basically have summed uh, each individual's responses across those uh, five items. Um, another option, if you want to do this a little bit quicker, uh, you, can, you can do it this way. You could just say uh, sum, and then you can just say interest one, comma, interest two, comma, interest three comma interest four comma interest five and uh, that will work too you don't have to type in I'm just going to save over that you don't have to type in uh, each of the uh, plus signs so you can see it's summed everything right there if you want to um, compute the mean of those items uh, if that was your uh, preference uh, you can do the same uh, in fact I'll just create a new variable I'll just call it interest mean right here and instead of using the sum uh, function right here, we can just type mean and then uh, inside the parenthesis, we still have our items that are separated by the commas and we can uh, click OK right here. And so now at the end of the data set, we've got that variable uh, that's given. So uh, the difference is, is that with the interest, um, you know, the, the range uh, of, of um, of uh, values on this variable uh, is not going to be between say one and five so if you wanted to, to kind of talk about the average response to the items uh, for each person you could use this variable right here kind of the interest mean to kind of capture the average response for of a given individual across uh, those items but uh, you can't really talk about it as cleanly with that uh, interest variable right there but uh, you know, just keep in mind that basically they are they, they are both uh, representing the composite measure for the interest items. And in fact, if I you know if I take these and I correlate them both, you're going to find that they're going to correlate at one. So uh, you know they're just kind of different ways of expressing uh, the same idea, which is uh, where a person falls on the composite measure. Now, with respect to the FC items, we saw that item, basically the uh, item one and two and uh, item four, all of those are, are positively worded, whereas items three and item five, uh, which were the eight and the ten in the uh, PowerPoint, um, those two items are reverse coded. And so what we're going to do, what we're going to want to do first is to reverse code these two items so that when we sum them up, we're all, you know, we're getting an expression uh, where higher scores represent greater efficacy and lower scores represent less efficacy. And we want that to, to um, be reflected in the same uh, way across those items. So what we can do is to use the recode function first before we compute our composite scale. So if I go to transform, you actually have a couple of options. You've got recode into same variables and recode into different variables. And I'll be honest, I 
I tend to prefer to go with the recode into different variables uh, because it kind of leaves a trail. Um, if I'm working with a large data set and, and going through lots of different analyses, it's nice to have some breadcrumbs, so to speak, to go back and figure out what you've done up to this point. So I'm going to use the recode into different variables function, and I'll show you what, I, what I'm talking about here. So in this case, we're going to take uh, item uh, three and we're going to move it over to this in this uh, box right here we'll also do the same thing with item five and we'll move that over here as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create uh, two new variables in the data set that have been recoded uh, so i can move the uh, go up here to uh, fc3 and i'll just type in fc3 and i'll put a little r right there just to indicate that this is a recoded item I'll click change and then we'll do the same thing for FC5. So I'll type in FC5 and then a little R and then uh, follow it up with uh, clicking change right there. You can name these whatever you want to. This is just kind of how I tend to organize things when I'm uh, setting up um, data sets and, and, and recoding and so forth. So I just, this is just how I do it. I tend to use a little R to, to designate that. Now, at this point, what we're going to need to do is to go under old and new values. So here we've got old value. I'm going to uh, type one, and new value is going to be a five. So you know, remember those items uh, where a one uh, on those items, uh, uh, basically a strong disagreement with an item that is negatively worded, is actually reflecting greater efficacy. So I want to. Uh, convert the one to a five uh, right here and I'll click add then I'm going to do a two and a four right here um, I don't really need to do anything with the three because that's the midpoint of the scale uh, but I'll go ahead and do that sometimes I like to do this just as a little placeholder and then we'll do a four and a two and then a five and a one and click add right here and from there, when I click continue and then on OK, you'll see that now in my data set, I've got these two reverse coded items. So there's FC 3R and FC 5R. And I know that it's showing up as a nominal variable, but uh, it's not going to make any difference um, um, in terms of when we're computing things. Um, but if you wanted to change it, you certainly could. We could just go over here and just change the, the scale to um, uh, or change the, the uh, scale uh, to a uh, scale variable in SPSS. Um, so at any rate, now I can sum up uh, items 1, 2, 3R, and 5R into a uh, 4R, a uh, 4 and 4, 5R into my composite FC measure. So what I'll do is I'll go to transform compute variables and now we'll uh, go ahead and type in for a target variable. I'll just call this efficacy uh, tote, if you will. And again, if I wanted to sum this up, I can use the uh, sum uh, function and then uh, then move each of these variables over. So I can kind of double click right there, comma, double click, uh, comma, then move to 3R down here, comma, then uh, 4, comma, and then 5R right there and in parenthesis and so when I click OK you can see that now that variable is showing up and once again if I wanted to uh, use the uh, sort of average response as uh, the uh, full scale score um, the, uh, the average response for an individual across the items I could do that very easily too if I go back to compute variable um, I'll just type in right here I'll just say AVG for average if I want and then instead right here we will just type in mean um, and then when I click OK right there, you can see that now I've got my FCC total uh, full scale and then the FCC average. So basically those are just some common things that you might use when you are uh, computing um, full scale scores using uh, survey items. Um, and so now let's just really quickly uh, do it with our political knowledge, comprehension, and, and uh, reasoning measures. There's not going to be any kind of recoding that we're going to do. We're just going to go to transform compute and I'm going to uh, press reset right here and then we'll just call this, uh, I'll just call this competence um, and then under the numeric expression I'll just go ahead and type in mean right here and uh, and then we'll take our uh, political knowledge comma uh, political comprehension comma and then political reasoning uh, variable and then 
we have our uh, in parenthesis click OK and so now you can see I've got the uh, 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 composite measure of my um, competence indicators okay so um, at any rate that pretty well concludes this uh, demonstration of how you can compute uh, composite uh, variables uh, using SPSS and I appreciate you watching